All right, Thomas, we finally did it. We're using the RV for something more, just sitting around in the shop. So I know I get a lot of uh, comments on the channel that I don't take my RV out nearly enough and enjoy it. So for the first time, I made it out to Quartzsite, Arizona for the RV Super Show out here. And I brought my son to join me as a co-pilot. And even though I've been in the RV industry for 25 years in Phoenix, Arizona, I've never spent any time in Quartzsite, Arizona. So this is my first time here at the show. Now it was a lot more than curiosity and RVing that did bring me out here. And even though we're at La Posa West right now, we stayed the night at La Posa South last night. We're just here to park for the day use only. Now just alongside the main road right here, way in the background there, is a tent where the show's gonna be at. My first quest is I have to get some nice pretty rocks because you know that's what Quartzsite's known for. But the second reason why I'm out here is that I was invited out by two online friends and uh, I wanted to visit them. Now we already met up with one of our friends last night and enjoyed boondocking for the first time and a group of RVers. But my second quest is to meet up with Ben with the uh, YouTube channel Minuteman Prep because he said he has a friend that developed a brand new and unique solution to mounting solar panels for off-grid use on an RV. There's one thing you're gonna find in Quartzsite, Arizona. It's very large solar arrays on RVs. As excited as I am to see RVs in their natural environment, I'm more excited to see a solution to maximizing the amount of solar panels you can add on an RV while minimizing the potential damage to an RV roof. And at the same time, maximizing safety and maintenance. Welcome to the 2024 Big Tent RV sale here in Quartzsite, Arizona. I'll have to figure out where we're going. All right, I'm not quite sure where I'm supposed to be going right now. I think we're gonna be outside the tent though. My understanding is we're gonna be the opposite way, Thomas. Oh, I think right there. You ready to, you ready to see this? Well, Ben, with uh, Minuteman Prep, I really appreciate you bringing me out here. It's a good, good, good opportunity for me to come see uh, an RV show, a yeah. real RV show in Quartzsite. Uh, as an RVer, I should have been here a lot sooner. Uh, but you were introducing me to your friend K Kinson, mm -hmm. right? From Monument Solar. Monument Solar, yep. and this is his. Uh, this is his rig here. His off-grid rig right here that he developed uh, so a proprietary solar mount for it, and he. Uh, you've ar uh, arranged for me to actually talk to him and mm -hmm. introduce the, the the solar racking system right yeah he's got like 5.4 kilowatts of solar panels up mm -hmm. there he's got I mean he can make the same amount of power as a lot of houses need on it on I only have 6,000 watts of uh, a panel on my house exactly so right he's got like house size solar panels and house size input to run his RV so he and his family with his kids his wife they live very comfortably, including the, running the air conditioners in here, no problem. Okay. So it's, I like it because if I had done it on my RV, I mean, I put 2,100 watts on my RV. Right. Just using the Z brackets. But the problem is I had to Tetris it in a way to fit right, the correctly. RV. Right, correctly. There's only so much available space. And for every panel, I put in eight holes in my roof. Correct, yeah. Whereas this, it's all perfectly lined up on the edge where the strength is on the wall. Mm -hmm. He's got like 200,000 miles on this and he's never had to retighten a single screw or bolt. Like it has really stood the test of time. It's, it's, it's incredible. That's why I'm just like, I've got to tell more people about this because it I absolutely love it. I would have had like 3,400 watts on my roof if I had gone to something like this. Right. I could have gotten way more. No, this is really exciting. It could be, I don't want to, we say it too much, but it could definitely be a game changer when you're talking about off-grid uh, RVing or even, uh, RVing in general. Yeah. Here it is. Monument Solar is what they're calling it. Now, unfortunately, the weather did not get the memo that it was supposed to be sunny today. But I imagine that array right there is still putting out quite a bit of power, even in this limited sunlight. That's both the owner of the fifth wheel and the designer and the owner of the company. I'll see if I can't bother him for a quick uh, explanation or maybe interview of his product. But it looks pretty impressive from what I can see from the ground. So I have Kenson right here with Monument Solar. Yep. You were both the designer, engineer, and owner of the company, right? Yep, all, all 
in one right there. So. And you came up with a solution because you already had the fifth wheel? Yeah, we, uh, we ended up going on a, my wife and I wanted to go on like on this RV adventure. And uh, she said, I'll do it, but I need to have air conditioner wherever I go. And so um, that means that I needed a heck of a lot of solar. And so uh, you got so a heck of a lot of solar. <laughs> the first question I have is going to be this. How big is that array you have on the roof? <laughs> This one's 5,280. 5,280. I have a 6,000 watt on my house. You have nearly 6,000 watt on the fifth wheel. So that's very impressive. Let me ask you, what is your product that we're actually looking at right here? Because you don't make the solar panels. You no. don't make the uh, charge controllers or the wiring. Right. You do the mounts because mounting is probably one of the biggest issues for an array of this size on an RV. Yeah, so to kind of give you a backstory, I initially built the the very first prototype was stuff off of Amazon and those different like what you can Z brackets and things like that. Took it to the road and within 8,000 miles, it was already fatiguing out and failing in different places. And right. So we had to go back through and re-engineer those key components. And instead of it being like a 20,000 mile system, we were going to make it like a 200,000 mile more robust like behemoth kind of thing. All right. Uh, so. so now what is your system? Sorry. Yeah. So in essence, it's the, if you look at it, the roof up minus the solar panels is pretty much our product. All right. So so it's um, the, the mounting rack for for the solar panels themselves, yeah. right? And it's supposed to minimize holes in the roof. Yep. Uh, safety so it doesn't blow off. Yep. Uh, serviceability on the roof. Serviceability. Um, it creates a, a huge shade that's and of course, Yeah, it's going to maximize uh, shading inside because yeah. that's a big uh, weak point on all RVs. So one of the big things that we noticed like from people that we talked to on the road and like what their biggest complaints with solar were holes in the roof. They're you're putting holes all over the place. Being able to service the waterproofing for those holes, right? Um, little critters building nests under panels, not being able to you know get those mm -hmm. cleaned out. Um, and then also like once you had the solar panels on the roof, if you did these big installations, you couldn't get access to the roof to do repairs on the solar or solar panels or. Yeah, as an RV tech, it is very frustrating when you get on the roof of these large arrays, you can't really walk anywhere safely. And if you do have to work on the AC units or even yes. a, a 14 by 14 uh, vent, it can be quite dangerous because you're doing a Tetris dance with small RV uh, sized uh, solar panels and these are not rv size solar panels you have no these are the pretty much commercial grade what you see in like a solar farm and all that so. right and it's laid out very efficiently you can service the roof so, so i like both those aspects so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the system here so first and foremost one of our first components that we had fabricated custom was these were these feet so this is what you're going to mount to the roof yeah so in essence our whole racking system bolts to this these feet Okay. Now this is our, our latest generation. It's a little bit thinner so that like this direction, so that we can like accommodate like the different uh, components on roofs that are close to the edge. Sure, because you want these close to the edge. Yeah, so this it's designed to put all the weight of your system on the very outsides of your rig where it's not gonna um, cause damage to the roof itself. Right. Okay, so there's no modification to the roof whatsoever. This looks to be a, a TPO membrane. Yeah, this, this is a standard uh, die core on it that the uh, manufacturer put on. So that's going to be the, the bracket right there that we did see on this, uh, the back of back wall. And this is a, this is a, our first version of it. And so if you notice, like we put holes all over the dang thing. Right. And it was a pain in the butt to waterproof. So we've left it now with 12 mounting holes. Okay. That kind of um, go along this side here and then a couple up in the corners. But as needed, you can drill enough better holes and put you know more bolts in if you feel so inclined. But Okay, and this is uh, aluminum, but it's yeah. not just standard uh, no, off-the-shelf aluminum. No, this is 5052 9 mil um, uh, aluminum, so we've had it textured as well. Um, and these actually, this is our 90 degree angle one, so this is for a roof that is truly flat. Um, we also have ones that are 95 degrees and 100 degrees. I'm talking about this angle right yeah, there. Yeah, angle right there. Because some RV roofs, or travel trailer roofs, have uh, more of a crown on them, right? Yeah, so like this one. Yeah, so like and this cougar right here is a very bowed is, yeah, crown roof on it. Degree all right, so, all right. We're not able to mount to the actual roof structure. Uh huh. We have the side mount bracket here, so it's the same thing except for it's going to be bolted to the actual side part of either this the school bus or the 
you know, horse trailer. I was going to say cargo or, trailer, utility cargo trailer, trailer, right. So right. This, this, the reason we have this component is it not only gives you a spot to mount those the racking system, but it gives you an anchor point for our truss cable system as well that you can see on the roof as well. Right. These cables you said you de de developed, is that just to keep it from the, the racks from... Uh, well, um, twisting. This, um, but what I realized is I have 800 pounds of solar panels and racks and all that, that or close to 800 pounds. That if I'm slowing down, right, I'm right. slamming on the brakes or whatever it is, all of that weight would be would be directed to this as well. Got it. Okay. So. Right? Okay. So what happens when I have that much torque shoving this way and that way? Right? You're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, so what this does is these take all that weight off of those welds, mm -hmm. and even if those welds fail, right, they're tied down. Okay. And that cable truss system is what really gives the whole system a really uh, both flexible but also robust uh, platform to mount those solar panels. If it's all welded up, it's going to fatigue itself over time. Right. And you need to be able to let the system absorb that and then go back to its original you know stance if that makes sense no it does make sense and so that those that cable structure helps in that giving it both structural um, strength there and that that uh, flexibility in that regard so all right so uh, these are the feet right here feet yep this right here is the solar panel support bracket okay this is our 75 inch one this one is a, a stainless steel and this clips onto the original frame of the solar panel. Okay. And distributes all of the weight of that solar panel um, to the side and everywhere where this is connected. So this was a challenge we had to overcome. This here is a, a solar panel support bracket. Okay. You can feel that it wraps. It all does wrap around, around, so it's. Uh... It clips onto the actual solar panel. Okay, so it clips on. And it lends kind of a, a, a support along this long axis of that panel. Right, so that would be the, the edge of the panel, the yep. frame that it's actually wrapped around. And this thing extends over the top of this one. Mm -hmm. And so the weight of the panel is then distributed to this guy here. Right. Um, if you notice, there's only two spots where that's bracketed there in the middle mm -hmm. onto the panel. Right here and right there, those are the only spots that this is bracketed. Mm -hmm. And it allows this part to slide back and forth as it bounces. Right. And it acts more as a leaf spring, giving a little bit of give without damaging Damaging the, uh, the crystalline yeah. structure right? I mean, or the glass or whatever? Yeah, if you were to hit this super, super hard, like a pothole or something right. like that, you, you can't have the glass just do that as No, well, yeah. Right? So there's one thing so, towable RVs have, it's a horrible suspension. So that's, this, this helps mitigate that. This whole system is meant to be robust, but then have that little bit of give to, to be forgiving on the road. Right, and that's stainless steel. Stainless steel. Right, and that's one of your uh, proprietary designs. Yeah, so this is one of our proprietary designs. This guy here, um, all of these components as well. Um, and then this is the, I wouldn't call it the heart of the system, but it is kind of the heart of the system, right? Yeah. So, so this is how you would mount it, yeah. and this is how uh, the panels get mounted, but actually make it accessible for uh, servicing, but also for maximizing solar efficiency by tilting it. Yep. And that's, I, I'm assuming, why we have so many different holes right here. Yep. So, like you see right here, this is how it's, it's secured while it's traveling. So the panels are secured flat, and it it's just stays really robust. This is the outside of the rig. This is the inside of the rig. One thing I'll show you here, it's kind of hard to see right now because we have these the back panels up like this. Yes, they got, uh, they're got facing south right now. We, I mean, the sun's behind clouds. When these are laid flat, you have a, a gap about that wide. Okay. All the way down the rig, so I can um, I can go down and walk down this before I travel. All right, so you down. actually have a lot more space when it's uh, laid down, is that what you're yep, saying? Yep, 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 yep. Okay. And if you notice, this is if it's tilted up right here. Uh, this is how my setup right now, if you look at the roof, the back panels have been tilted up. This is how they're, they're situated right now. Okay. And what it does is, if you notice, the solar panel ends right here, and it, it actually stays higher than the panels next to it if it's tilted as well. Right, so it doesn't uh, cause shade on it. Right, so if we were to pivot this one at this point, it will actually lower the panel lower 
then the panels in the back. Okay. That makes sense. Oh, it does make sense. So we, we wanted to minimize any shading of panels if you're trying to optimize for solar production. Okay. Look at this right here. This is what's called our saddle bracket. We replaced, uh, we were using little Z brackets we found on Amazon, different things. Mm -hmm. This saddle bracket, um, we used to have, you can see the old remnant holes of the actual um, Z brackets that we had mounted to this. Right. The problem with that is in the space that I could do two Z brackets, I'm able to do now both sides double the size of the Z bracket. It's made out of the, the, the higher quality aluminum too. Higher cut rate and thicker aluminum. And not only that, but because it's a saddle bracket, that cross member on the roof that holds the whole system, that, that aluminum rack, that this will sit right on top of that. And even if the bolts that secure it down do fail, it's not going to fall on your roof. It's it sits. It'll stay seated on that uh, that cross member going across. Right. Exactly. So I mean, this system still doesn't eliminate the need to inspect your roof and your components uh, at least once a year, maybe twice a year at the minimum, right? Right. But it does actually enhance that too. I, I my understanding is if you actually put these, you can make these actually vertical or ninety degrees, right? Yeah. Let me, I can show you that here real quick too. Sure. So we actually have it on our little poster here. So. So that's just tilted. This, yeah, so this guy gives you, this is like looking from the back here. Um, you can have these tilted for you know winter storage. If you want to keep the leaves off or the snow and ice and whatever, it kind of helps slough it off and keep the, the panels free from you know obstruction in that regard. Um, we had this right before we came down. We had it set up and it was, we had it snow on a few times. And I come out in the morning and it all sloughed off and I was able to keep my batteries all Right, off, right. Kind of um, and it's also nice because if you're about to go travel in the winter time and the snow is sloughed off, you're not scraping the ice off before you have to take it to the freeway. Yeah, you don't want to scrape off uh, the, the ice of uh, a membrane roof. Right. So then this is an example of having the panels up in a vertical fashion for full roof access. You need to service your air conditioner. You want to get a closer look at all the components. You want to redo waterproofing, whatever it might be. You're able to do that without the, the cumbersome, you know, without having to crawl under the whole array and, and, right. and or remove the panels. And then even though they're not designed to safety rails, it would almost be safety rails the entire length of the RV. Yeah. Well, and you don't see it in this picture here, but there's all like those, the, uh, the cross angle, angle support brackets, they, they go right here. They, it makes this a very sturdy right. when you have them both in there. So even if you're up there washing the roof, yeah. you'd feel a lot more secure too. Yep, yep, yep. So that's... These are, we're trying to address all the complaints we've got from people who had solar, you know, right. like with this design. But here you can kind of see how this, this one is lower, dipped down a little bit than this guy right here um, in terms of the solar option. Right, and I imagine what you could do on these, uh, depending on where you're setting up each year, you could actually know exactly where you would want to set it up yeah. for, for whatever latitude you're at or what seasons yeah. you're at. So you wouldn't just be marker in there right anymore. permanent marker, piece of or paint marker, or something like that. Yeah. And I, I've gone up there, and if I just sit down and, and knock it out, I mean, I did my full system here, and I have it angled up to whatever I want within an hour. Okay. I mean, once you get the hang of it, right? Thing, so. So fun. your your system is really the mounts right here, the saddle brackets, and these adjustable uh, brackets, right? Is that kind of the heart of the system right here? And this guy. Oh yeah, and the uh, stainless steel rack right there. So the cable work, yeah, these and, base feet, and these different, those are our custom components. Right. Yeah. And then we're leveraging what's already existing in the market. Correct, yeah. So and, our, yeah. And you made it to actually work off of standard dimensional uh, aluminum, basically. You know, none of us can afford to have these kind of components fail. You're putting something on the roof of your RV. It's no, this could be a, a huge liability of, if you're driving down the road, a panel falling off. Uh, or if it's high winds, a panel getting blown off into somebody else, somebody else's RV or on a person. So yeah, you're taking this all very seriously. So. It's not just uh, hoping for the best, just uh, spitballing it out of the garage. Right. <laughs> You've actually done a lot of engineering behind this too. So that's really impressive. And I don't think you'll find a bigger array <laughs> out there on an RV. But the only real holes you're putting in the roof are at each one of these mounts. So unlike your right. traditional uh, solar panel mounts on an RV with a Z bracket where each Z bracket has two or three holes in it and using four brackets on each panel it starts adding up to a lot of holes yeah. and so this minimizes that amount of holes and the additional advantage that I can see as an RV tech is you have a lot of space right there so you have 
uh, a lot of airflow, so you don't have the the solar panel actually con uh, conducting heat onto the roof itself. So it does, and it would help the the, the performance of the the solar panel too, having airflow underneath it. Yep. Now I think what you were talking about, lastly, is you're going to be upgrading your solar panels to bifacial. Correct. Yep. Right. Now most RVs won't be able to use a bifacial panel because the uh, the bottom is stuck to the roof. But you can see there's space on the bottom right here and the the sun will actually reflect off the uh, membrane surface back up to the bottom of the uh the solar panel allowing the bifacial solar panels to i wouldn't say double their their no. their performance but it's still free power that you wouldn't be able to use on a normal rv but you would be able to use with a mount like this so the solar panels themselves are rated at um with the bifacial gain they say it's anywhere from 15 to 25 percent all right so but, i i don't know personally i haven't i haven't no, like, I tested know. that but in essence, that's in essence what they're rated at with the from the spec sheets and all that. So, on there. so a standard one would have been 5,400 watts. So, yeah. and, and with bifacial raised up to uh, 6,700 watts. Yeah. yeah. So that's a essence, pretty big gain for free power that you wouldn't get on a normal RV setup. Yeah, if you wanted to like do air conditioner and weld and do all these crazy things, like we got you. I imagine the most important aspects of this for you and for anybody watching would be uh, availability price you want to shop around and like call different installers you're going to get a price range per watt installed um, anywhere from between 850 and 1250 i've seen as high as 15 dollars per install watt okay and on a rig my size here the most that anyone was able to quote me was 3000 watts okay and that was like truly maximizing every little opportunity right, right. Uh, most of them came in at 2000 to 2500 watts okay um that you know, so this range, the largest systems here um, end up being uh, probably in the 8, 850 range per installed watt. And that's before any discounts. And then the smaller systems, you're more looking at that 12, 1250 range. Okay. And now your direct uh, supplier, or do you work with uh, distributors? I've partnered with uh, like Battleborn and the Victron and some of these other solar you know, cells and all that to bring those components in. Um, if you buy a system from us, we do the whole thing. So okay. if you have components that we can utilize as part of the design, we'll utilize those for sure and we can save money there and all, what have you. But we spec out our systems to where it's like, we know that you will not be able to like overcharge your batteries or whatever it might be. It's sure, like, sure. We've made it very uh, a clean, robust co cookie cutter uh, approach with it. So. Would be coming to you or to one of your distributors to do this? Yeah, so we have, we're, we're building out our partner network of installers. We've met a few here that we're going to be working with going forward. Um, and so it could probably be done on location as needed. Um, but we will have a facility in Mount Pleasant, Utah, where we'll be able to do those installations. And okay. so you'll, be, you'll come to us, we'll give you a window of installation. And if we don't hit that window, we give you $100 a day until it's finished. Oh, wow. That's pretty so. impressive. So uh, they would go to www.monument.com. Uh, slash, uh, hyphen solar.com yep okay so on that on our website you can request a formal quote from us in essence that just sends me an email with your contact information i reach out we have a call we kind of spec it out see if it's something of interest to you um yeah if you go on there you can also request a it'll, it'll ask you for a referral code and if you you know use you know you guys referral code or one of ours or whatever that's where you can kind of get those 10 percent off and, okay and all that so Sounds really good. All right, uh, Kenson. Yep. All right. That's me. Uh, I know a lot of people want to know, uh, where is your, this is your design, your components. It's not your manufacturing facility, but it is made in the USA? Correct. So we have it all fabricated out of a um, facility in Orb, Utah called uh, TriStar Manufacturing. Okay. They've, uh, they've helped us out a lot with that. So, but yeah, it's all American made. You know. Right. It's not something you're just going to be able to find a generic no. copy of this online not somewhere yet. i'm sure someone's gonna copy it at some point but, well i hope not know. no hope not i hope no. not that is really cool well i appreciate you taking your time to uh explain this to me yeah, and no to uh, my viewers i want to thank ben with uh minute prep minute man prep yeah he, uh, he brought he, me yeah. out here he said he was so excited by this product and he said i had to see it because it was quite revolutionary yeah. and i think it is he came out and looked at it the first first influencer that did it and he's just like holy crap and i'm like yeah it's kind of fun you know and so He's been, he's been a good friend and helped with this, so. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Kinson. Hey. I look forward to uh, 
your successful future. Yeah, ask I me in a few years how this goes. <laughs> All, right. All right, you enjoy the rest of your RVing. All right, take care. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your house with us, too. Yeah, this is our home. So. Great to meet up with uh, Ben with Minuteman Prep. Uh, don't forget to go to his channel to check out uh, a better review of a lot of solar panels and generators than you'll see on mine. I do my absolute best, but he's going to know his stuff a lot better than me. But thanks a lot for watching, guys. This is a really fun system, and I thought it would be pretty interesting. I don't know if I could put on my RV, but I'm not going off grid too much. But thanks a lot for watching. Bye. Wow. See out here in the LV. Oh crap! I forgot it. LVTA. They do have. Um, sewer dumps. You just have to wait in line if you want to uh, use the sewer dump right there. There's the line for it. I don't think it's too long. It sounds about as yesterday. There's an Integra RV meetup over here. I wonder if they let Travel Supremes in there too. Who's to know? I think they let the uh, Class E's in there, or are they just a little too snobbish? What do you think, Thomas? I mean, they got an anthem in there. Well, that's a Class A. I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> well, that's a pretty serious <laughs> solar array on that motorhome. Wow. It's got a mini split on the back, too. Two of them. That awesome tiny home right there. Fresh corn. <laughs>